I spent a year working solo on my biggest project yet, and here's where it got me. Okay, so maybe saying a year is overselling it a bit, since I really only put about 60 hours into the project so far. In December 2020, which is over a year ago now, I put out my final video covering the development of my previous project. Believe it or not, that project was actually just meant to test my skills and serve as a use case for a framework and toolset I was working on. I mentioned this in the very first video for the project almost two years ago. While I may not be working on that project anymore, the code lives on in the project that I started last February. That project, which is my current project, is called Vagrant, and it's a fast-paced action RPG in the boss rush style, although I don't have any bosses yet. And as is standard for my projects, I am using Python and Pygame. Python allows me to write game logic very quickly. So it ends up being very cost effective if I ever fully commit to indie game dev as a job. So what did that one year, or 60 hours, spent on Vagrant look like? And why did I only spend 60 hours? Well, there was a lot of streaming involved, so if you're super interested you can watch a lot of it in detail. A good portion of it is just me sitting there answering questions from chat though. Uh... Main menus are not important in game jam games, people don't really do that. It's kind of unnecessary. Uh, it doesn't hurt to just start the game and this is what you see. Back in February last year, I started the project with some modified assets from my game Aero Blaster so that I could get straight into working on the combat mechanics. I got pixel perfect combat using some mask intersection logic and threw in some eye candy by making the hits shoot out some sparks. One of the most important effects is the slowing down of time after impact during combat. This puts an emphasis on combat and gives the player more time to press buttons. This effect is achieved by just reducing the delta time so that the game thinks less time has passed every frame than what time has actually passed. The weapons in Vagrant are intended to be very unique. Every weapon has its own set of abilities that are unlocked through the use of the weapon itself. In the code, each weapon is its own class that inherits from a basic weapon class that has the basic functionality and like the uh, functional bindings for attacking and stuff like that. This allows me to very easily write the custom functionality for every weapon that goes along with its unique set of abilities. After finishing the basic combat, I proceeded to go through the struggle of trying to find the right art style and palette for the game. I'm not sure how common this is, but switching up styles to see what works best is a critical step in my development cycle for large projects. In my first decent sized commercial game, I cycled through a few different styles before finding the one I ended up sticking with. I think it's pretty obvious how beneficial it was for that game in the long run. Similarly, on my game Drawn Down Abyss, I tested out a few different art styles before deciding on a style, then proceeded to change the palette multiple times throughout the rest of the development cycle. Even with all the changes I've made to Vagrant's art style, I wouldn't be surprised if I significantly changed it again soon. The visuals and the music are normally what sells a game in this genre, while the gameplay is usually what gets people to keep playing. Messing up the style can easily result in a profit variation on the scale of an order of magnitude. Art style itself plays into the success of a game in more ways than just that though. If you remember, I mentioned that Vagrant is a boss rush game. The boss fights occur in these three color bubbles of space called white zones. This may seem like it's just there as a strange part of the game's world, but it's actually a way I can save time through the art style. Since the boss fights will occur in these areas, I can draw the bosses with two colors and go ham on animations without spending too much time. So I get the benefit of having a colorful, normal world for the game but I'll also have the fancy animations for the boss fights, and I can show both of those in a trailer for your game, which should help with the uh, sales. While I haven't made any bosses yet, the next video I make covering Vagrant will probably feature the first boss fight. I've never done animation on that scale before, so it'll definitely be an interesting problem to tackle. 
Around the time that I rolled a 16 on the only truly random d20 in life, creativity, I proceeded to start working on peripheral mechanics and content. Coincidentally, I was in Maui when I started working on that, and on the flight back east I stopped in LA for a 5 hour layover. I was incredibly sleep deprived and feeling sick because of some airport Jimmy Johns. I tried sleeping on the airport floor, but that only worked for about 15 minutes. Since I didn't have anything else to do, I thought it would be a good idea to create the inventory UI at this point. Don't ever do this. That turned out to be a horrible idea. The code worked, but I had to go back and rework most of the code later when I found out how scuffed that mess was, since it didn't play well into the extensions I needed to do. The rest of my work on Vagrant for the year was pretty much just artwork, level design, and NPCs. I now have the first three of the 20 or so planned areas of the world. I just have to create one more area with a new enemy and some weapons, then I'll start working on the boss fight, which I'm really excited for. So how is it that I was only able to put in 60 hours in a year? Well, it's actually pretty hard to stick with a project in the long term. I definitely had a busy year last year, but when I tried to start scheduling work on the project to get it done faster, I quickly came to the realization that it's probably safer at this point to avoid burnout and just focus on chipping away at the project every now and then. Once I'm in the final stretch of development, a schedule is extremely helpful and it did wonders for my previous two commercial projects, but sticking to a rigid schedule for something that I do in my free time for fun is a good way to achieve burnout. So I want to avoid doing that for months on end. During part of the year, I was working a full-time software job, maybe I'll make a video about that someday since it was crazy, and during other parts of the year I was taking a full load of college classes. On top of that, I was running this YouTube channel, doing freelance work, maintaining other projects, and keeping up with other commitments. I ended up dropping a lot of my commitments last year just because it got to the point where I was too burnt out to work on my own hobby projects. Anyways, that's pretty much the story behind the year I've spent working on Vagrant so far. If you're interested in the code, I periodically release source code for Vagrant and other unreleased projects to my Patreon. There's a link to my Patreon in the description if you want to take a look. Thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video.